So this guy calls me up. I fix a lot of his stuff and he says, hey, I pulled my mower out and it's not working. So I put a new spark plug in it and I still couldn't get it started. No, it's not the spark plug. It's never the spark plug. No, never say never. It's, it's inconceivable. No, I'm not Benzini. I'm the lawnmower lady and I like fixing small engines. It's never the spark plug. This is a commercial Honda mower. It's an HRC 216. Has the Honda GSV 160 engine on it. I'm going to pull this carburetor off real quick, give it a good clean, and I'll show you how I do that because I know it's not the spark plug. This has nothing to do with a spark plug. It's not going to fix the problem. I'm going to drain out some of this gas and see what we get. Fuel tap is off. And little drips are coming. There is a little bit of grit and dirt in here, but I'm pretty sure that just came off the exterior of the carb bowl. Of course, the carb bowl is clean, but that means nothing to what's underneath in the jets. So I'm just sticking a little mirror up in here and, uh, and I don't know if you can see, but I can see that that main jet looks kind of clogged up to me. So I got this teeny tiny screwdriver from a friend in the UK that I shaved down to go up inside of here and hopefully I can get this out without having to remove the whole carburetor, it's a pain and it's a pain. Unfortunately, this is so gummed up, I can't get this out. So I wanted to avoid what I'm doing right here. Put these in one at a time so I don't lose any gaskets. These little studs keep the whole thing from falling apart in your hands. Remove the breather tube, which is kind of hard to get to. I'm using a screwdriver to pry that off a little bit. I know you can't see that. There we go. And I find the easiest thing to do on these commercial mowers is to remove this entire bracket. Get that out of your way. Be mindful of this gasket that pops off. It's kind of a stretch, but you can flip that and get that linkage out of there. The entire carburetor pops off. There is a spacer back here on the back. I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to remove the governor return spring. Turn this 90 to get the governor linkage arm off. And it certainly would have been easier for me to remove the fuel line first, but here I am. Give that a good twist. And get a screwdriver in there to work that guy off of there. There we go. I'm going to remove the main jet. Need a screwdriver with flat sides, not flared. See, it, it was loose. Keep tapping. I can remove. Take this out for now. Probably okay. There we go. That is completely plugged up. And no doubt the emulsion tube will need some help as well. These are some very tiny holes in there. So much dirt coming off this carburetor. I'm going to try to blow it off with shop air. So I'm not a big fan of carb spray. That's what I'm going to use on these jets. 
Where are your safety glasses? And these are guitar strings. That feels kind of bad in there. That's kind of crunchy, as is that right there. And these are a welder's tip cleaners. Just get the the size that just will barely fit in. These are almost like a little file. Make sure that jet is clean. Last thing is to clean out the idle circuit. That is a JIS screw because there's a little tip on there. If you don't use a JIS screwdriver, there's a good chance you'll strip that out. I have to remove the idle screw. I see about three threads showing. And lastly, I hope I can get this out because I didn't take this spacer off of there. There we go. And this idle circuit, there is a jet in there. It's non-removable, but it connects that hole right there through there and comes out in the carb body. So let's make sure that's clean. This notoriously gets clogged up. Spray some in there. And you see, not a lot coming out of the hole. There we go. There Now there's some coming out of that hole. And to make sure it's clear, I'm going to run a little wire in there. I know you can't see this. I can see the guitar string inside of there. And then lastly, go straight down. Make sure that that is clear as well. Spray it in here. Hopefully we'll see it come out somewhere else. And it is bubbling there. The other place you look for it to come out are those three little holes right there. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. So we know that idle circuit is clear. I did lose the little spacer. I'll put that back on later. Replace the idle circuit screw. That's on there pretty tight. Replace the idle speed screw with its spring. And I think there were about three threads showing. All right, I'm just using a touch of WD-40 to lubricate this tall end. Goes in first. Next is the main jet. It will bottom out, not too tight, so you can't strip that. Put a little WD-40 on the gasket that stayed inside of there. The needle is in good shape. There's no ridges or dents. The float has no fluid in it. Clip that inside of the clip. But drop that in the needle seat, replace the hinge pin, and that, and the heat shield came off. It's all right. And then replace the bowl nut. Make sure that's on good and snug. Wipe the exterior of this down. Make sure there's no gunk on the gasket faces. And we're going to put this back on. All right, what remains is to get all these pieces back on. There's a gasket back there. That's why these studs are so helpful. Clean off the face of that governor arm and the governor return spring goes in the small smaller of the two holes
the spacer again. Just follow the marks of how this is on. You can see sort of witness marks of where this was. You want the flared side going towards the intake of the engine. Heat shield. Carburetor. Make sure the arm is clear. It's not jamming in anything. Next thing is this linkage right here. A little bend around, and that's fine. I guess I should have put the fuel hose on first. Fuel hose clamp. And there is, I guess I should have showed you this beforehand, which I'll show you right now. On the other side of this plate, there is another gasket which is sort of glued on. Make sure that's clean. It's hard to do, but you can do it. Don't want to break that plastic piece right there. There we go. Next thing is to replace the screw holding the plate on. This is a 10 millimeter. Again, check and make sure governor arm is clear. It's attached. This is your choke. We're going to make sure that operates. And you see it closes off that choke flap. Not completely. There we go. It closes that off. So all that's good to go. Next, replace this spacer. It only goes on one way. This hole right here lines up with that hole. Excuse me, you can put it on wrong, but it's only supposed to go on that way. I guess I should have said that a little clearer. Get our breather tube coming out there. All right, make sure the back of the air box is clean. I sort of blew all that off. Air box goes on. sort of only one way getting this breather tube on here is a bit of a challenge you probably can't see what i'm doing but i'm just gently pushing that on with my finger until it's flush on the back side right there put some pressure on here and remove these studs one at a time and replace the actual screws i don't want to drop any of those gaskets I've already gotten a little off here. Here we go. My carburetor slid down just a hair. That's not as tight as it needs to be, but I'm feeling back behind here to make sure that spacer didn't fall out. Nope, it's in good shape. I don't want to use an impact to tighten these things down because it will just strip things out. So there you go. That one's snug, and then this one is snug. You don't want to go too far because you will warp the air box. The moment of truth. It wants to start. Oh, choke wasn't on. winter I can almost 100% guarantee it's not the spark plug it's bad gas it's always bad gas if you like the video push the like button helps the channel out a whole lot however I will say there was one bad spark plug and you can watch that video right here mo happy